It's been two and a half months now since Chris Dawson was found guilty of murdering his wife, Lynette, back in 1982. The convicted killer has been locked up on remand ahead of a sentencing hearing which started in Sydney today. The Crown has called for a life sentence for the 74-year-old, arguing he's shown no remorse for his actions. Let me bring in Headley Thomas for the Australian newspaper's National Chief Correspondent. Headley's podcast, The Teacher's Pet, was integral in prompting police to reopen the case leading to this trial. Thanks for joining us, uh, Headley. Uh, uh, tell us about what transpired in court today because uh, Chris Dawson was there in his prison greens. He was actually confronted by one of his daughters. That's right, Chris. Um, Chanel Dawson, Chris's uh, eldest daughter, he has uh, three daughters, uh, two with Lynn and um, another daughter with the uh, the babysitter who was uh, with the family, staying with the family when um, Chris became completely obsessed with her. And Chanel Dawson made a, a very poignant um, address to the court. She spoke about the impact upon her, uh, the ripple effect for her entire family and the way that her own relationships with people have been so adversely affected since her mother had disappeared. She was raised by her father uh, while he was telling her and her younger sister that their mother didn't love them enough to stay around. And these very cruel lies, um, as Chanel described them, had a profound impact on her and, and her mental health. And uh, I don't think there were too many dry eyes in the court or on the live stream as Chanel was describing what had happened and when, what she always, at least in recent years, believed uh, had happened to her mother. Uh, it was a very brave and, and moving address. Yeah, ju just incredible stuff, really. And Greg Sims, Lynette's brother, addressed the court as well. Can you tell us, are they, are they addressing the court or the judge or, or addressing Chris Dawson directly or a bit of both? It's a bit of both, Chris. Um, what I think these hearings are designed to do is give the victims an opportunity, a platform to describe the hurt, the um, injustice, the impacts that have been inflicted upon them and to use that to also appeal to the judge to weigh those issues when he's determining an appropriate sentence. And Justice Ian Harrison, um, he made very little comment through the um, submissions made by Greg Sims, Lynn's uh, brother, and uh, by Pat Jenkins, uh, Lynn's sister. Um, he, um, he also heard, of course, from the prosecutor, Craig Everson, and from Chris Dawson's defence solicitor, Greg Walsh. And uh, uh, there will be a period now where the judge considers all of these things before he returns in early December to deliver his uh, sentence uh, upon Chris. Now, um, you know, the, 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 this could go, could go down a couple of different ways. The prosecutor and the defence, they talk about the heinousness of what had happened. And... Um, it's hard to think of something more heinous than the murder of uh, a, a much-loved and loving mother uh, and wife who was utterly dedicated to her girls and the uh, terrible fate that, that you know, befell those, those girls being raised on yeah. this diet of lies. So um, on one view, it's a, a very heinous end of the scale. But um, the lawyers uh, are thrashing that out and they've also come up with written submissions and um, the judge will, um, will weigh all of those things. And that, the other crucial plea that I understand was made by a number of people was directly to Chris Dawson to tell the family where Lynette's body is. That's right. Chanel appealed to him to do that and to acknowledge, to tell the truth about what he had done. Um, he locked gaze with her for a period and then uh, his head fell and it was as if he couldn't face her. Um, the closure, if there is ever such a thing after a tragedy like this, um, must be a bit closer when you can properly um, uh, bury the remains of a loved one and um, Lynn Dawson has been missing, um, murdered 
40 years, the judge found that she had been murdered on that night. Yeah, indeed. So, um, you know, let us uh, let us hope for that closure. We've just lost that uh, signal there with Headley Thomas. Uh, I didn't want to embarrass him then or anyway, but I want to mention something that happened earlier in the week uh, that Headley wouldn't have wanted us to draw attention to, but we should. And have a look at this uh, vision from the News Awards on, um, on uh, Monday night when Headley Thomas was presented with the Sir Keith Murdoch Award for his just brilliant journalism through the Teacher's Pet podcast, helping to come to this outcome through the courts and the prosecution of Chris Dawson. And here's Greg Sims, Lynette's brother, speaking at that event. Without your support, respect, sensitive reporting, passion and commitment to providing quality journalism and devotion to reporting the truth, there is no doubt we would not be in the position we are today. Yeah, it was a great event was the awarding of the C. Keith Murdoch Award at the News Corp Awards because not only did we recognise the brilliant journalism that Headley has demonstrated through this podcast and all his reporting on this issue, this issue, but you saw the family there being appreciative of it and the obvious trust that existed between them and Headley Thomas. So well done to all of them. And there's a new episode of Headley's latest podcast, The Teacher's Trial. It's going to be available tomorrow via the Australian.com.au.